Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and another video in our fly tying series. Today we're gonna to be doing one a little bit different. This is gonna be our first soft tackle that we've done on the channel. And there's a bunch of reasons why we're finally doing the soft tackle. And number one is that just, it's just a great fly. Um, it creates a lot of movement in the water and it's just a great fly. Number two, we've had a lot of people asking us to do a soft tackle so that they can see how we tie soft tackles. Number three, um, I'm doing the fly selection video as the next video in the urine nymphing series. And I really needed to have a video where I've done uh, a soft tackle before I could really do justice to that fly selection video. I wanted to be able to show you guys everything that I use and why I use them in the different situations. So today's video is allowing me to be able to do our next video, which is the fly selection in our urine nymphing series. As with all of our fly tying videos, you guys know by now, we give away a half dozen flies. So we'll be giving away a half dozen flies of these, of the blowtorch. In order to take place in that giveaway, be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting us know what kind of things you wanna see. And then at the end of this video, we'll be announcing the winner from the last video, which is the, um, I always forget this, it's the Olive Flash Paragon, um, which is a fantastic fly. Um, so we'll be giving away a half dozen of those. That'll be announced at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But let's get to tying the blowtorch. All right, so we are gonna start off, let's get this guy out of here. And we'll start off with our hook and a bead. All right, so we're using a, a hook that we've used a lot. This is, um, you basically just use a standard jig hook. This is a 60 degree barbless jig hook. This one's made by Sabre, but you know, any brand really will do. Um, this is a size 14. I'm gonna tie this in a 14. I'll tie it in a 16 usually to a 14, maybe a 12. Um, but you know, the standard size nymph hook basically. All right, and for the bead, you know, for the weight on the fly, it's basically gonna be a tungsten bead. This is a 3.3 millimeter tungsten bead. Uh, it's a slotted tungsten bead. This one's unfinished. You can also use black nickel. It's basically the same. Um, if you want a little more color, you could use uh, you could use different ones. Um, some of them I tie with like a rainbow bead on them. Those are kind of cool. But this is a 3.3 millimeter. This basically equivalates to a 1 8 inch um, bead as well. So if 3.3 mil or, or 1 8, the base basically the same. Okay, so that's what we're starting with today. Rotate you so you get set in here, right? There we go. We want that bead rotated so the slot is allowing us to sit down onto the, the eye of the hook better. We are going to start with um, some a few lead wraps. This is gonna be a 0.015 uh, lead wire. I'm gonna wrap a few on here just to give it a little extra weight. You know, if you wanna tie these heavier and lighter, this is how you do it. You, you change the size of the bees and you change how much lead or the size of the lead you put on. Um, this is gonna be a decently heavy one. If I wanted to go heavier, I could go up in size a little bit. Probably not too, too much more than this, um, but I could also put heavier lead on there. But I'm just gonna be starting with the 0.015. I'm gonna do about eight or nine wraps. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pull that off. And we're gonna slide that up into the slot of the tungsten bead. Where did you go, buddy? Let's get you up in there. There we go. Okay, and um, I'm gonna start putting, you started to slide down on me. Don't slide down on me. All right, so I'm gonna start a little bit of thread behind this. Um, this light lead is a little tricky sometimes. So I'm gonna start behind it and then I'm gonna go on top of it and just kind of wrap it in here. And that's gonna basically allow me to yank it out of there a little bit more cleanly without, um, without creating that little last piece coming off. All right, so we are going to clip out our tag end. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in that bright tailing material. So there's a, <laughs> so there's a material called glow bright. Um, this is what we're gonna use today. Um, it's just this orange material that um, we're gonna double up, actually more than double up, and it's gonna give us that nice little bright tail. I just had a whole bunch fall off here. So the way we're gonna do this, it's, you know, I like to cut things long and then keep reusing. The way that we're gonna double this up, it's not gonna really allow us to do that. So I'm gonna cut off probably a little more than two, maybe three inches of the glow bright. And I've just basically got a little piece here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just gonna double it back. I'm gonna try to line the tips up just so I can double it again. So I'm gonna basically make four of these. So I got a nice little loop here. I've basically, the ends are, are, are met. I'm just gonna try to fold this over one more time and try to pinch that in. I had one fall out. We'll get it, we'll get it. 
All right, so I basically have a double loop of it here. I'm just gonna pinch that in and make sure it goes past the bend of the hook. We're gonna cut it off at the bend of the hook. We're just gonna do a little pinch wrap and pull that in and get that in nice and tight. I'm gonna bring it back to right about the bend of the, of the tail, okay? Now we're gonna pull it straight back and we're basically going to clip it right at the bend of the hook. And that's gonna create that nice little orange tail for us. Okay, and we'll clip out the rest of this. It's a little short. I, I, cut, I do it, just tie it short just because I don't wanna waste material. Um, but I basically got my nice little, my nice little orange tail in there now. Okay. Um, and actually I didn't mention the thread. Let's, let's talk about the thread. I meant to talk about that before, but this is basically, uh, it's a fluorescent orange, um, UTC, it's ultra thread. This is the 70 denier. Um, we're going to start and end with, with color. So I'm just going to use that bright orange thread for throughout this entire fly. All right. We're going to bring it back up just to the base of that, th that lead again. And the next thing we're going to tie in is going to be a ribbing material. Um, you can use all sorts of different ribbing materials. Um, I often use this sulky stuff. Um, it's sulky. It's, um, it's just a really thin, you know, translucent, pearly kind of uh, finish material. Um, so I use that on a bunch. You can use Vivas, but this is a little bit thick. I, if you use Vivas, I would use it in a small. Um, probably a small for that. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually using um, a little bit of Paragon body just because I really kind of like it. It's going to go well with the, uh, with the, with the dubbing that we're going to use. We're going to use an, uh, an ice dub and peacock. So I'm going to use a little piece of this to, uh, to tie in my ribbing. All right. So we're just going to hold that in. We're going to catch it in with our thread. I'm going to bring it back. All right, one more forward, because I'm gonna put on some dubbing and I wanna be able to move forward with it. So now we're gonna be putting on the body. Um, I'm using, you could, the one thing about this fly is you can definitely change it up. A lot of people, I mean, this technically, it uses like an, an ice dub, uh, a peacock ice dub. Um, this is a hairline. There's also, I think it's like Spectra who makes another one. This one's a little coarse. It's a little hard to work with. And so I probably should experiment and see if I can find something a little finer. Um, it does look really, really great. It's just kind of hard to spin, but that's the next part that we're going to do is the dubbing body here. So let's pull out a little bit here and I pulled out a ton. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use all of this at all. Okay. We're going to start by taking, I wet my fingers. And I started taking just a few pieces out and I'm going to twist it as tight as I can. And like I said, this dubbing is a little tricky to use. Um, and so, you know, as much ends up on the floor or in my lap, usually as ends up on the fly. But the trick is just to spin it nice and tight and keep it nice and tight. Let's see if I can get a nice little bit on here. That's too much, but I'm going to spread it out nice. Okay, just do a tiny bit more. So I've maybe created, it's probably two, two and a half inches. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to bring it up the almost the entire length, but I'm going to work back to the base of the fly so that I'm starting that dubbing color right at the tail. Okay. And we're going to wrap that up, just building a tiny body here. Nothing too, too big. That's a little big. I want to go forward. All right. And that's going to end right there. Now we're going to take the tailing material that we already tied in. This is a paragon body. Um, you know, this is one that I've used in the past um, on some of my other flies. I think I used this one on the, uh, on my last paragon, but uh, it's basically an olive uh, color. And it matches well with this, so I like it. If you want something, you know, there's other colors. There's all sorts of stuff you can put on here. Just, you know, use whatever you think is right. And we're just basically going to wrap. I'm going to wrap up. Right toward the top. We're going to lock that in with a turn or two. And we're going to cut that out. Okay, I have a fairly smooth body. I can trim this out a little bit because um, we're not going to use the dubbing for legs like we do in other 
in other videos. Um, the dubbing is really going to be just the body. And that's what this coarser material is a little bit harder to work with with that, but that's still a decent body. Okay, now comes the tricky part. Um, now we want to make a soft tackle. So we want to use, these are basically um, CDC feathers. And so like, here's a little um, CDC feather. I'm actually using a, a, an olive one. This is a dark olive. And um, you can use a dark olive. You can use, you can use various colors. Um, I use a couple, I use Dunn a lot too. Uh, I think a lot of people use Dunn for their, for their feathers, which is just basically a kind of like a, a grayish material uh, color. Okay, so I'm not gonna use Dunn in this, in this case. I'm gonna be using, um, I'm gonna be using that olive color. And there's two different ways you can put this on. Um, there's an easier method, but it might not be as nice. Um, so I'm not gonna use this method, but I'll kind of tell you what it is. So I've stripped one side of this feather off. You can see it's pretty well down to the, um, the quill in this. I would tie it in by the tip and then I would wrap, wrap it so that my, my fibers are sticking up. And as I wrap it, I'm gonna keep sweeping it back and I'm gonna do maybe two, three, probably two, two and a half, three wraps at most. You don't want a ton, um, but then when it's done, you're gonna tie it off. The problem with that is these quills get thick as you get down toward the bottom. You see how thick that is. So as soon as I get in there, I'm gonna be building some body that I won't really want there. And so, Instead, I'm gonna do a different method that involves a dubbing loop. This is certainly a trickier way of doing it, but I think at the end, it creates a nice fly. So I am gonna, I am gonna tie, tie it with the dubbing loop. So in order to tie a dubbing loop, I'm first gonna pull out some thread. I probably have, what, six, maybe a little bit more, maybe seven inches of thread. I'm gonna put my finger in the middle and put my left finger in the middle because I'm right-handed and I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to go around my dubbing loop and then around and then uh, and the reason I do that is I've now closed off the bottom of this dubbing loop. Okay. Before it was one on either side of the hook. And so when you put stuff in there, it's not going to stay. Now it's going to stay. Okay. There are different tools that you can use when it comes to these dubbing loops. You can use one of these guys that hooks in there and, and has a weight and then you spin it. Um, I am honestly using one that's a little more advanced. <laughs> um, this is a stone faux um, dubbing loop. And um, you can see it's, it's kind of splayed out like a Y, but as I pull it tight, it's gonna pull it together. And then when I get it, it's gonna, you just spin it and it spins right around. So um, I'm basically gonna put this in here you can't see what I'm doing, sorry. I'm gonna put it into the dubbing loop, all right? And so, I don't know if you guys can see if it's in focus or not, that's, that's not bad. I've got it nice and loose now, so you can see how open it is, but as I pull it, it's gonna tighten that dubbing loop up, and that's what's gonna capture my material as I do this. I'm just gonna spin this around, try to get you out of the way just for a minute. Okay, we're gonna nice, leave this nice and loose for now. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of dubbing onto this. It's gonna help hold those um, CDC fibers a little bit more as they twist into the thread. I'm gonna, again, wet my hands. I'm gonna take just one part of this dubbing loop, just one thread. I'm gonna put just a little bit of dubbing on it. So if you can see, I got just a little bit of dubbing. Get my shirt out of the way so you can see it. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get our fibers from our feather in that same area, okay? So when you're doing a dubbing loop, you have your feather and then you use a little clip. The little clip is going to grab your fibers. You're going to cut along here and then we're gonna insert the fibers into the dubbing loop. So I'm gonna see if, I wanna make sure I get the right material into the dubbing loop. And I don't need a ton. I don't need a hundred fibers here. I'm gonna take a section from my hand, basically up what is that, a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna to try to capture those in my clip. Get in there. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to cut along the feather. I'm not going at a very good angle. Okay. This is the super tricky part. So I wanna make sure I get these fibers that are in here 
into my dubbing loop. I wanna go nice and loose. I wanna get them in here. And then I wanna pull on my, I wanna pull on my device here and it's gonna start pulling them tight and then I gotta let go. Okay, once I let go, you cannot release tension on this or your fibers are gonna go everywhere. Now I start spinning it and it's gonna start locking those fibers in. The longer I, loop I have, the harder it is to lock them in. I'm gonna wrap it pretty good, okay? Now, this device is pretty nice because I can just, I go, I pull down and it's going to create a little 90 degrees so I can just start wrapping. I'm gonna get you out of the way now. I just swung a little thing out of there to keep my thread out of the way. Now, as we're doing this, we're gonna catch up till we get to the actual fibers. I'm gonna go from back toward the front of the hook and I'm just gonna pull these fibers back Okay, as we go along, keep pulling them back. I don't have too, too many fibers in here, but again, we don't need it really, really crowded. Sparse is good. So we'll pull these back and just try to get them to lay down. All right, we're basically there. I'm gonna go up over the thread and now I'm gonna lock it in with my actual thread here. Okay, now, we can go ahead and cut out this dubbing loop. I'm just gonna slide up and try not to take any fibers with me when I cut it. And now I've got my CDC in here. You can see it's a little bit kind of all over the place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up, again, I, I'm, I got a hot spot on the back and I'm gonna have a hot spot on the front. Okay, so we're gonna take, we're gonna sweep those fibers back and we're gonna build up a little bit of a hot spot here. And that's gonna help keep those fibers coming back like that, okay? Now, these fibers are definitely long. <laughs> um, that was the feather that I used, and that's okay. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Let's go ahead and finish this guy off. Some people will put a little super glue here. You can put a little super glue on the thread. Um, I don't really tend to have a problem with them coming apart, so I'm just gonna put on my whip finish, get that nice, beautiful orange hot spot at the top, pull it in, pull it nice and tight. We'll get as close to the fly as possible when cutting out our thread. And now that's a pretty good fly, but you can see just how long some of those fibers are, right? They're pretty long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pinch back. I'm gonna sweep them back and I'm just gonna kind of try to break them off with my hand here. And if I want to, I can actually use the scissors as well, but you see how that shortened them up quite a bit. Okay, now when these things get in the water, they're gonna move a lot and that's the whole point. You wanna move in like in the, in the water I could go probably a little bit shorter on them. Let me try that. I'm just gonna sweep them back a little bit and just clip them just a little bit more. Yeah. But that is the blowtorch soft hackle. And that's, it's just a way of doing the hackle with those CDC fibers. They're really, really great materials. Um, they're interesting to work with for sure. Um, it's a little bit tricky to using the dubbing loop. Um, so not everybody will get that the first time for sure. It takes a little bit of practice. I've been practicing, honestly, but you're gonna need some of these clips. Um, you'll need some sort of tool to be able to spin that dubbing loop. Um, you know, either one of these stone foes that are really, really awesome um, or something just more basic. There's a hundred different types of these things out there. Um, I don't even know who made this one. Honestly, I don't even remember, but um, they're very, very useful for, for doing these dubbing loops. So, all right, so that is the blowtorch. We'll give you a 360 degree view of this guy. But, uh, you know, it's a great, great little fly, a little bit different than what I've tied on the channel before because it's the first soft tackle. I would say most of this fly is just like any other fly that we tie in terms of this, your standard nymph. The difference is you, we put a soft tackle on it. And I would say also, you can put a soft tackle on any of the flies that we've tied, most of the flies that we've tied um, on, on the channel. Just add this at the end and, and you've got your, your soft tackle. And so soft tackles are great because they, they create a lot of movement in the water. These little CDC fibers, they really, really move in the water and it makes it look like legs moving. Um, they're great to swing at the end of a drift because um, those fibers will, will really move and it makes the fish think that they're basically a fly swimming to the surface to emerge. So they can be really, really great at the end of a drift to let it come up, up, up toward the surface. Um, they do not sink quite as well as a normal fly. The more resistance you have on the water, the more things you have hanging off of the fly, 
the less it's going to sink as easily, right? So it's not going to sink as well. Um, so you could tie it with more with a bigger bead. You can tie it with more lead if you really wanted to get them down, or you could just put a heavier point fly and make this your dropper fly. That would be really, really great. I think they're really good for um, low water conditions, clear water conditions. You make them a little bit lighter. They won't sink as much, and you, you don't want them to sink as much in those in those cases. So maybe like summer um, kind of conditions where you maybe have lower water and they they the fish are looking up more for some of those flies um, can be really, really great for that. So, um, and if you were, it's got a nice hotspot on either side. So it is a fly that's easily seen. And as I mentioned, you can put different beads on it to make it seen more easily. So, um, you know, you could use it as a dropper in like say pocket water, any, anytime you need something to be, be able to be seen more. Um, they do catch a lot of fish. So anyway, this is the blowtorch. Hopefully you guys liked it. Add it to your fly box, catch some fish, send me some pictures. Love to see that. But, uh, why don't we get to the drawing for the last fly tang video? We're going to give away a half dozen of the Olive Flash Paradigons. All right, so let's do the giveaway for the Olive Flash Paradigon. We had 149 participants in this giveaway. And uh, thank you everybody for the support and for all the great comments and for hanging out and tying flies with us. So let's see who our winner is. And the winner of the Olive Flash Paradigon is... Joe Cruz. Oh man, you're like a big fan of the channel. You'll love this. I liked your Predacon fly. I'm heading out to Wyoming in August and I think they should work on skinny water. Yes, they will. Thank you for the video. Joe, you are the winner of the Olive Flash Paradigons and uh, I'm sure you'll be on top of that because you watch every video of ours. So, um, But I'll, I'll reach out to you and make sure that we can get those flies to you. Well, congratulations to our winner of the Olive Flash Paradigon. We'll have those flies sent out to you soon. And remember to take place in the giveaway for the Blowtorch. Just be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below letting us know what kind of things you guys want to see. This channel lives off of your feedback. I read every comment, and um, you guys have given me so many great ideas. Keep it coming. So I really appreciate it. You know, we've received so much support over the years, especially in the last year, year and a half with the Euronymphing series and all the fly tying videos um, and the, some of the adventure videos that people have really loved. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking how they can support the channel. And at the time, I really didn't have anything other than, sorry guys, just watch the videos um, and share them with your friends, which is still one of the best things you can do to support the channel. I appreciate it. But I'm going to be announcing something kind of big, something I didn't think I would be doing, but uh, it looks like I, I, I am doing it. So I'll be announcing a little of a special video next week on that. But anyway, thank you for the support and I hope you guys enjoyed this fly tang video and we will see you soon.